in order. How about introducing the guest real quick? Our guest in this segment is Melissa Power, who is just filled with all sorts of helpful suggestions. I was going to say, she came in this morning, she took one look at, uh, at Rob and started saying, you should do it this way. You should do it that way. No, you're doing it all wrong. Reconfigure your keyboard. Yeah, for, for the last, for, 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 five, the for, for nearly 10 minutes, she was giving these helpful discussions, helpful hints. She really was. She oh, has improved God. the quality of the place <laughs> just by being here. It's That's right, yeah. But notice, John, that she concentrated on Rob and kind of ignore the two of us. Talked about his posture, you know. And, <coughs> you're slouching, Mario. You're slouching. Wow, such exaggeration for early Monday morning. Hey, it's radio. You get to do that. I, I actually appreciated all of your yep. uh, suggestions. He was ignoring it, but he appreciated it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, how can you say I ignored what Melissa well, said? Well, you had your phone zone. You were looking at your at your monitor. You did not even look at her. I know this this strikes you as something that that you don't actually, actually believe, but I do work here, and and when before the show starts, I still have a job to do. Just because you walk in at seven twenty five, Bill, doesn't mean I stop doing what I'm doing to just well, focus does, on you. It does kinda because we come in, we start talking, and then it, it's very hard for you to get done. Right in the middle of a year, whenever yeah. you go on air, I so. do have a job here, Mister. I just believe you should work smarter, not harder, Rob. You know, I'm going to try that in the new year. That'll be my 2025 <laughs> resolution. To try to... Copy and paste. The next Copy thing I'm going to paste. do is I'm, I'm going to try to not have to wake up at 3.20 a.m. <laughs> now going on 15 years. That just brought the house. Wow, that was dead air right there. Silence was... right there. Uh, Melissa, uh, welcome in. Good Thank to see you, you again. Me. Yeah, 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 nice to see you guys too. Obviously, this is a very busy and important time for yes. the Board of Education in Berkeley County. It is. We spoke with Damon Wright last week who explained his reasons for being one of the two yes votes to mm -hmm. retain Superintendent sure. Stevens. You were one of the three no votes along with the board president and vice president, uh, yes. Pat and Jackie, and they'll be on later on in the week. Uh, you voted no when it was time to originally hire Superintendent Correct. Stevens, one of two no votes then, and obviously your mind did not change in the last year. Correct. Can you tell us why? I think here's here's what everybody can can take away. You know, two years ago, I walked in to my time, albeit just two year, to finish out Dr. Queen's um, term. Um, and I, I remember one of the first questions that was asked of me after I got elected, which is, will you work with the others on the board? And my answer then was yes, probably a lot more words in that response, but the answer was yes, uh, I've done that. Um, so I can absolutely say I tried working with Mr. Stevens, and at the end of the day, um, I just did not feel that there was enough improvement from my perspective, that warranted another uh, term. Improvement with Mr. Stevens himself or with the school system? Both. So performance as well as uh, seeing what that looks like rolled out in the schools. How much influence did the news of the state taking over uh, have to do with your decision at North Middle, have to do with your decision to vote no, and how much had to do with the presentation before that led up to that where you had said on this show that you felt like information was withheld? I can tell you that that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. It is not the sole reason. I know a lot of people out there have been saying, you know, well, it was because of North Middle that he's that he's gone. For me, that's not actually the truth. Um, there are a multitude of reasons. Um, and I could not continue in in my elected capacity to um, continue with something that just was not working. Damon's explanation with the reasons why information might have been withheld had mm -hmm. to do with the fact that as the board of five, you were also the jury when it comes to deciding the fates of people who are suspended. And Part of that is true, yes. And do you weigh that in terms of this, uh, the withholding of information that's been alleged? I, so here's, here's what I would say. I think that there are several different ways you can look at statistics. One way is to look at it from a very positive perspective, which is what they provided to us, which was, hey, look, there's improvement, which is great. Um, but what I feel was deceptive in nature was the fact that we did not know what the actual proficiency was for the school. Um, we did not know what 
um, you know, that look like from both reading um, and as well as math, but at the same time, we weren't getting a clear picture uh, or a clear understanding of what the, the student behaviors actually were lending to, to maybe the deficiencies that are going on, not just within that school, but maybe within those, <clears throat> those other feeder schools, because those feeder schools, I mean, if you're talking about a child that's, you know, in seventh or eighth grade, that's still on a third grade level, what happened? I go back and I go, what, what happened that, you know, third grade, something, it, was it before third grade? Was it you just gradually, you know, improving each year and you're just getting to third grade? Or did something happen somewhere along the way? And, and those are questions that we're asking right at the moment and we're trying to get information. Superintendent Arvon was basically forced out, forced to resign over the special education scandal that took place. Uh, Superintendent Murphy was here on a short-term mm -hmm. basis, kind of seemed like he was brought in to be the warden that straightened things up and straightened things out. He left, mm -hmm. and then Superintendent Stevens came in on a one-year contract. You'll have another new superintendent mm -hmm. in the very near future. Yes. Are you concerned about a perception that this school district is dysfunctional at this time? I would be um, negligent in my duties if I thought anything um, other than that, I know that that is a perception. Um, I also know that this Board of Education, the members that are on it, are different than the, than, um, the members that were previous. Uh, I'm not going to speak to what the other previous board members, when they elected certain individuals to be in positions. I'm not going to speak to what their reasons were, what they, what process they went through as far as, you know, what questions and stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. What I can do is take what information I have based on the past in our county, information I'm gathering from both principals and teachers and parents and, um, and ultimately students, and then take our own experience that we had over the last couple of years and try to figure out what that looks like for, for at least what questions I would ask, what things I'm going to look for in the next superintendent. And yep. I guess I'm on, I'm just one of five people. So yeah. How much latitude do you have? I realize you, mm -hmm. you have the selection of the final selection, yeah. but do you have the latitude on what will the term of employment of the contract will be? Will it be a one year, two year, five year or that? Do you have that? Let, let me, a couple other things. Yeah. Uh, do you have latitude there? Do you have a latitude on the pay scale? Uh, or do you have to, been to what the State Department of Education tells you you can or cannot do? So part of it is code. We cannot go beyond a four-year term. Um, and then there is some, inf there's, there is some code out there that has um, previous state superintendent interpretations to it that lend itself to the possibility of having more than a one-year term. Um, I, I don't know where, where we will end as a board, we do have some latitude, I believe, but at the same time, because the State Board of Education is involved with at least one of our schools, um, we need to, and when I say that at least, we, we know of the state of emergency for North Middle, but we also know that uh, Winchester Avenue is still a CSI school. So um, we, we need to keep that into consideration. Um, and I don't know what that could look like. We have not received uh, the plan back from the State Board of Ed for what they're looking for as far as uh, improvement. Um, we should be receiving that later this month. And then that probably will help, I would assume, I'm assuming, whether or not that's the right assumption or not, I'm hoping that that will help us you know, in, in guidance with, with what we're looking for for the new superintendent. So you're tying a little bit of what happened at North Middle to your selection process. Of not, completely, not completely, not completely, but, but we have to take into consideration. Take into consideration. Uh, a what if question. Sure. Uh, I, for one, believe that you need to have as much flexibility on the local level as you possibly can as you make the selection, especially in terms of longevity Agreed. and the uh, and the salary. Agreed. If you get some pushback from the uh, uh, from the state board mm -hmm. of education how much of you as a board are willing to push back mm -hmm. on the state board of education yeah so that's a great question um and i think part of that has to do with just there there's 
there's a lot of details in there that I don't have the answer to. I mean, if I if I do an assertion of, let's say, the board wants four years, which I'm not an advocate for personally, um, I, I'm more on the you know two two year term. Um, forecast and I know that there are some people that would argue you can't have somebody in there that has great vision for the county and I dare say well then why do we why not have you know four-year terms for every position for every job whatever it is it shouldn't matter we should all have good longevity visions for for where we're where we're working me, let me interrupt but, here quickly yeah, for a lot of our jobs we do have four years I'm thinking about the elected I, jobs I, so, I, yeah. I agree but yeah. this is not an elected job yeah. this is not an elected job that this this position that is superintendent is a hired job. So what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about elected jobs, I'm talking about hired positions. So any, I, my purview is that if you are in a position that you've been hired to come in and do a job, you should have short-term and long-term goals. I don't care what, what term you have, um, you should have long-term and, and short-term goals. What I will say is this, um, I, I don't know if if we want four years and the and the state board says well you could, you can only do one year, is there negotiation? I don't know until we get there. I don't even know if uh, the rest of the board would want four years. I don't know that that's where we would settle on. I, I this is there's a lot of question marks to play into that question, Bill. Um, I'm 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 having a hard time sure. answering that question. No, that's directly that's, is that's right. That's the best I can yeah, do. That's right. There's a lot of tail chasing that's going on right now in the, in the aftermath of this report that's come out. But when the new superintendent comes in, mm -hmm. his time starts on his first day. Mm -hmm. On his first day, assuming things don't change, he's going to be looking at uh, a, a condition where 60 or excuse me, 30 percent of West Virginia sixth graders are at um, at level. 30 uh, percent are at uh, level in math correct 22 percent of berkeley county sixth graders are at level yeah uh 43 percent of uh, west virginians are at level in uh, uh ela and 36 mm -hmm. percent are at level in berkeley county mm -hmm. so this is what he's inheriting and this is what correct. you're expecting him to fix so when you're when you're interviewing him are you looking for a curriculum specialist a discipline specialist a philosophical leader to kind of change the course of of this ship that's obviously going the wrong way what's the what are you looking for out of what's going to wow you by a can with a candidate yeah, so and i can only talk for myself i can't talk for any of the other board members i i've taken the time over the weekend to to really look at that i'd love to have someone that is well-rounded someone who um, knows a lot about curriculum, but also understands that discipline is sometimes where you have to start in order to allow learning to take place. So someone who is is a strong person and just doesn't back down. I mean, I know that there are some kids in our schools that um, parents will use the fact that their child might have an IEP for something that is not necessarily restricting them in learning so much as maybe they need some extra, um, they need, might need to take a walk around the building or something, I, I, you know, to take a break. But um, they, you, you've got behaviors in the classroom that just are out of control um, and we need to be able to stand up and say, okay, th these behaviors, that doesn't that we can't do that that's a hard no and if parents are coming in and and saying my kid didn't do that but yet at the same time there's evidence of that child doing either damage to the school or to another human being whether that's a student or a staff member we need to have that conversation that says it's not acceptable we need to have that hard line and i'm one of the individuals who who has said like you, you know if if someone has is threatening a lawsuit because their child is throwing a temper tantrum and or can't control themselves and and they're throwing objects in the room i'd say bring it like we, we have to provide a safe environment for our students to learn we have to provide a safe environment for our teachers to teach they weren't there to be you know um corralling you know and herding cats they were there to teach 
Well, where does that break down now? If if I'm if I'm the principal of a school and little mm-hmm. Bobby Mario is creating real problems and I take discipline against mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. and his mother comes and raises a stink and mm-hmm. as the principal, I double down and say no mm-hmm. and then ultimately it goes somewhere it does. and I get overruled. Who is overruling me or who is it whose responsibility is it to back up and say no well you know what mr gilstrap is right in this case and we're going to stick with him so what i can tell you is in my conversations with um staff that are in our schools is that there are there has been direction from folks at the central office that says you have to cave you have to you have what to is a central office is that- central office is the administration office that's located at winchester avenue okay and I know I'm throwing out, I'm, I'm throwing that grenade out. <laughs> well, so it, and does that I mean, report to the superintendent? Is that his and they job? They do ultimately report to the superintendent. And we've, I, I, I personally have asked for certain questions to get asked, certain individuals to be um, interviewed or, or, or have, have questions asked of them. What's going on? Why is there a direction coming down from higher up that says you you got to keep a kid in in the classroom like this so i mean it's it's a multifaceted is the solution as simple as having a superintendent who says okay we're not doing that anymore that is part of it it is not all of it you also have to have individuals that are there to support you in the central office so you can have a superintendent do all you want but if all they're doing is telling you you know oh yeah we did i mean yeah that's not going to work can i sh- go back to the, some of the specifics getting away from philosoph- uh, philosophy for a second <laughs> uh what's the time scale when do you sure. have somebody in place uh when will uh, uh ron stevens the last day will he still be part of the school system yeah. and, and yeah. a question like that yeah so currently um his contracted last day is june 30th mm-hmm. and we are working with that deadline Okay. We're working with it. I, so I, you're going to have somebody in place on a temporary or permanent basis by, you have to, uh, temporary at least, by yes. one, 1 July. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> That's that. we, 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 but, have, we have put into place. Jackie Long and I, um, she's the vice president of our board, um, Pat Murphy, last uh, board meeting um, when we did this vote, uh, recommended uh, Jackie Long and myself to sit down with Dr. Schooley. He's the director of human resources. He's um, one of our assistant superintendents um, to sit down and put together some information, um, how to get the the advertising started, which was started literally the very next day after the vote. Um, and we are, we will, be, he will be providing a more detailed timeline at tonight's meeting to, um, to not only to the rest of the board, but also to the public. Well, all of us have been through various recruitment process, yep. hiring process. Absolutely. A three week process is unrealistic, unrealistically short. I think what is what is helpful in this particular time frame is you have the same exact board members from last year who sat down for a couple of months and went through a lot of we had conversations between um, our lawyer and uh, someone who had come in and helped us um, you know put together the search the superintendent search process and we're literally taking that that bulk of of uh, um, information we're changing dates obviously because it's not 2023 it's 2024 and um, we're changing it to to fit this timeline is it a short timeline absolutely and I'm not just I'm not dismissing that whatsoever Um, we I do know that when we were talking with Dr. Schooley about um, the advertisement the advertisement would indicate this is going to be a short time frame and to already plan for if you, you know you're selected for an interview that that we would have that information readily is there any thought ba- based upon what rob just mentioned earlier mm-hmm. about the previous uh, superintendents is there any thought about bringing in a temporary superintendent f- for a reasonable period of time and then doing a more complete regional slash national search or extending Mr. Stevens on a or week by week or uh, month by month. Something, basis. yeah, but to I, buy yourself more, 
You will not vote, I will for, not, that. I will okay. not vote for that. So, uh, but you could bring in someone temporary, and it could be temporary for six months, could be temporary for a year. What it does is buy enough it time does. to do the right do the right search. I would say that our county, I don't know if they have the stomach for another interim to then have another hold. Give me a second to answer the question. <laughs> Put the, that finger down, yeah. Bill. How did you know I was saying go and say something? Because <laughs> the finger Cause started the finger to go went up. up. Okay. Yes. The infamous right index <laughs> finger. You, you've you've got to you've got to take into consideration that they've had a lot of, and and I I am aware that they have had a lot of change from that at the top um, over the last few years, and that is not my desire. My desire is to not continue to have that for them my desire is to give them something that that could help create the stability unfortunately there was just too much instability over the last two years uh, as a skeptic i see what you're saying are totally contradictory to each other uh mm. your desire to uh, uh to uh to get a solution fairly soon your desire to uh to ensure that we do not have this turnover in the future that means you're going to have to have the right person we are i'm not convinced you can get the right person i am and in three weeks time i am you want to know why yes because i've been committing a lot of this to prayer and i and i'm going to go back on my faith and i'm gonna i'm gonna say something this is and i know that there's the quote separation of church and state that does not exist in our constitution no matter what anybody says me personally, I was elected, and one of the things that when I was originally elected on was the fact that I I am a woman of faith. I take those steps, and sometimes they m might look absolutely unorthodox and ridiculous, and I get that, and I understand that, but I also know a miraculous God, and I also know that he can supply everything that we need in the time that we need it, and no one can shake me from that. And I don't and and I know that after a lot of prayer this was the decision we needed to make and I absolutely know that whoever we get next is absolutely the right person for the job for right now. I want to go to our newsroom with Dylan Bishop who is a substitute teacher Hi. and our producer <laughs> Dylan. Hello. Hello. So uh, as a substitute rather than a full-time yes. uh, teacher in the county I don't really feel qualified to have an opinion on this uh, yeah. myself but I did But hear you are qualified. Are you a resident? I am. Then you were qualified, sir. Yes, but separate from that, <laughs> I uh, some of the full-time teachers I know in the county, sure. uh, when they heard the news of uh, Stevens yeah. not having his contract renewed, I heard the word scapegoat used, and I heard sure. some of them uh, talk about signing on to a letter uh, in support of uh, Superintendent Stevens. Sure. How, what sort of uh, feedback have you gotten, if any, from, from uh, teachers in the county? I have gotten, <laughs> well, uh, whether indirect or direct, I have gotten both. I have gotten both support and I have gotten animosity. Uh, I am not, I did not go into the vote thinking that I was going to, you know, that, that, that I was going to get praise and adoration. I, I, I don't, I'm not doing that for this. I'm doing this for the betterment of our schools. I, I wish that individuals who might have, and I would dare say there are a lot of individuals who are not watching the school board meetings. I know that there are a lot of teachers that do watch the school board meetings. Um, and I know that the teachers that, that have reached out to me uh, nine times out of 10 have said, thank God. So, I, if if I'm looking at this from a perspective of it could be a 50-50, 50% wanted it, 50% didn't, at that point, I sit there and go, wow, 50% didn't? That's kind of interesting. I would like to think that if you're, you know, if, if you're doing a great job, it'd be overwhelming. But on the other hand, I've also seen the argument that he's a nice guy. I've never said he's not a nice guy. I just said he wasn't right for this position. Was he ever given a le le um, realistic chance to succeed, Melissa, considering the circumstances of Dr. Murphy's resignation, of retirement from the office, the need to find somebody, and, and apparently, uh, if I remember the times, mm -hmm. a movement to find somebody who would take less than what Dr. Murphy <laughs> took in, 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 a, in a market yeah. that I'm told was already 
uh, uh, we were at level or below what the market was paying for superintendents. We are way below areas. market. We are way below market. Yes. Honestly, we and, are way below. And then we have this gigantic mm -hmm. hack, which mm -hmm. disabled the school system for mm -hmm. the better part of the remainder of a, of half of a school year, if I remember that part mm -hmm. correctly. Too was he basically set up for failure in the first place and no. given a one year contract? No, I, I I can tell you for me, the hack was never was never in the back of my mind. Uh, when I was I, I was contemplating and praying about whether or not to renew his contract, um, for myself, when I am one of the five individuals that law states is your supervisor, I would like to have confidence that the information I give to an individual is not taken lightly. I've had too many conversations one-on-one -on -one with him in, in board meetings with him um, where I'm not, I'm not, I have not gotten, um, I've not gotten what I feel like should be what a supervisor gets in confidence and in in you know continuing a contract for someone um here's the here's something that i would give you maybe some food for thought we recently had an issue within our schools where you had a lot of teacher faculty senates um coming to our board meeting um back in i want to say it was april um there was a miscommunication done and, I, and miscommunication can happen anywhere but I don't like hearing just I, I don't I don't like hearing excuses. He very easily could have said during a board meeting, I'm sorry for the miscommunication and he didn't say it. In fact, there are there were a lot of teachers that were in attendance to that to that meeting that were very upset with how they were treated from the top down. And so, uh, you know, that's that's hard because I know he's a teacher. He used to be a teacher and I know his wife's a teacher and I, I I'm it's it's disheartening to to see that because if you want to listen to all your stakeholders, part of that is your own employees, the ones that are working with the students that are working, you know, in the classrooms. And I, that's hard. That's hard. And that was a public meeting. Mm -hmm. um, there have been other conversations that I can't disclose because it was an executive session. Um, what I can tell you is I just did not feel this was a good fit. We appreciate your time this Absolutely. morning, Melissa, and your frankness, and uh, generally speaking, all of your suggestions about how to improve the workplace. <laughs> Just copy and paste, Rob. <laughs> copy and paste. <laughs> copy and paste. That's it. Melissa Power at uh, 835.